but he might be like dissipating now and he seems to be just a nutball. And we don't allow people to just randomly take pictures of our things. How do you stop it though? Like like Google Earth, if they like drive by and they do their thing, do you guys not allow that? I, I can't show you the list. I'll tell you though. So where's um, the list come from? One second. Jelly bean? Well, they've been in my pocket. They're real warm and soft. July 4th, 1976, my brother Tom and I buried some gold in this area. It's nice to meet you, sir. Thank yeah, you for taking yeah, yeah. time to talk to me. Pleasure, right? pleasure. It's Squires again, right? Squires. Tell me your first name is Billy. It is not. Damn it! It is not. Oh, that would have been sweet. I know. Can I take pictures on the sidewalk? You're not permitted to take my picture without my permission. You are breaking the law. I'm you know, not again. You think it's against the law for me to take a picture? Bless your heart. You're not too bright, are you? Hey everybody, KULT News back again with another video. Today, we are in Lancaster, Ohio. Now Lancaster, Ohio was founded by a fellow named Ebenezer Zane in 1798. Its current population, according to uh, Mayor Don McDaniel's office, it's, it's in the 42,000 neighborhood right about now. Um, in uh, 2020, I believe it was 40,500 and something. So it's, it's uh, growing slowly, but it's growing. Um, this is a lovely people's bank. Uh, you may recall, we've had some interesting responses in the past to our uh, us exercising our First Amendment rights from people's banks. Um, they're, they're not big fans of the First Amendment in my experience. So, you know, that's just me. Um, we are going to walk around this bank, though, and see if these good folks at People's Bank recognize and respect our right to take photos and videos in public and in publicly accessible places, such as this lovely sidewalk here. Let's rock and roll. Oh, hey, and let me add something here. Um, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen our videos yet, here you know we like to we like to incorporate 911 calls in the videos before we actually put them out, and sometimes that means holding on to a video for for weeks, in some cases months before we post the video, because uh, we really feel like the 911 calls, the police body cam footage, really really gives the videos that certain uh, uh, I don't know I don't know, but it's what's the word Je I don't know it's French. It's fancy. Basically, it means it makes a video kick ass. Um, so, but I want to say something though. We are, Stacy and I, and if you don't know Stacy, whoo, she is something else. Stacy and I are going to, uh, we got a lot of loud trucks around here. Stacy and I are going to get married. Stacy's my uh, partner in crime, so to speak. Uh, we're gonna get married. She's my fiance and we are getting married when we get a hundred thousand subscribers And we're going to get married in the Brown Palace in Denver, Colorado. It's beautiful But We're gonna get to a hundred thousand viewers first or subscribers rather before we do that We've had plenty of videos that have had hundreds of thousands of views So if you're watching this and you're not a subscriber be a pal and subscribe would you? If every single one of our subscribers got just one person to subscribe to our channel, one more person, we need 100,000 know, this week. So help us out. I sure appreciate you. Just by subscribing and liking and sharing videos. Let's go ahead and hop around the front here and see how things are going up here. So in my opinion, this is how banks should be. They should have heavy tint on the windows so you can't see anything i literally even if i zoomed in and, and i know you guys have said hey get a polarized lens or whatever sometimes like right here if i zoomed in i'll show you you can see you can kind of see through it if there's light on the inside like right there if somebody was inside there i'd be able to see their silhouette but i wouldn't be able to get any kind of personal information off of anything there i mean they would literally have to write in big giant block letters their account number and hold it up to the window for me to see it. And even then, I'm not sure I would see it. But, oh, but, but as we all know, that doesn't prevent people from losing their freaking minds.
my apologies. No, you're okay. I just, I just got a boss and they're very anal retentive about certain things like anybody comes up and asks you what you're doing, you gotta, you gotta get them on camera and what have you. Um, I'll tell you, let me see. I've got a list here. Hold on. What was your name? I've got a list. That's a relatively short list of people that I can talk to. My boss told me if if any of these particular people talk to you, then it's okay to talk to them. But, but uh, if you're not on a list, I can't talk to you. But are you the, are you the manager, manager here or are you just a customer? Uh, I'm an employee. And who are you? Uh, well, I'm, but who are you? I mean, I don't typically just identify myself to people that come up well, on the street. It's because uh, we don't allow people to just randomly take pictures of our things. How do you stop it though? Like, like Google Earth, if they oh, like drive by and they do the little thing, do you guys not allow that? So tell me why you're taking pictures. I, I can't really tell you. You haven't even told me what your name is. I'm not quite sure who you are. It's Tom Rose. Tom Rose. Hold on Tom one second, Rose. Tom. You are not on the list. It's a very short list, actually. Can I see your list? I, I can't show you the list. I'll tell you though. So where's um, the list come from? One second. Jelly bean. Well, they've been in my pocket. They're real warm and soft. All right. They've been in my pocket. They're real warm and soft. So, um... I think you're making that up is what I think. You think I'm making what up? The jelly The list. list. Oh, no, no, no. I really am. I got a very short list of people I can talk to. Because um, I can... Nothing secret there all right. about taking pictures about you. May I ask? I am 55 years old, and I'm going to ask you a crazy question here. Are you and I about the same age? You about 55? All right. I will give you a rough idea of what I am doing here, but I will do it in the promise that you don't share this with a lot of people. July 4th, 1976, my brother Tom and I buried some gold in this area. And I am here to take photographs of every square inch of this place compared to the photos that my brother and I took on July 4th, 1976 to figure out exactly where it is between you and I. I suspect it's right about where that tree is, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Um, I've been obsessed with treasure dig digging since I was a very small child. A fellow by the name Mel Fisher. I don't know if you ever heard of Mel Fisher. Um, Mel Fisher, when I was a little kid, gave me a gold nugget. He was a, he is a, I think he's still alive. Um, he's a gold treasure hunter. And uh, he, he found some very, very cool ships and dug up a lot of gold and all that. So Mel kind of got me addicted to it. I have been scuba diving before for treasure. Um, and when I was uh, eight years old, on the July 4th, 1976, my brother Tom and I, we are fairly well-to-do. We had a coin collection that had a lot of gold bullion, and we buried it in this vicinity. Why did you bury it? Because we wanted to dig it up in the future. The plan was to dig it up on September 23rd, 2027. Well, my brother Tom is dead now. He was, uh, he was in, in law enforcement, and, and he is no longer with us. Died a few years back. And so... so so when you buried it, what was here? That I'm not going to get into. I, I, I can't give you details on that. Is it because you don't know? Uh, because I don't know. Well, I was here on the 4th of July 1976, and I have lots of photographs of... I have photographs of where the treasure was buried from multiple vantage points. Specifically, a certain spot on that church property there, we took photos of where we buried the treasure. So I... I I, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking photographs of the entire area here and I'll be frank with you based on my guesstimations I know exactly how many we buried we buried a total grand total and this includes um, some links of gold chain they're about that big that, that uh, we got from Mel years and years and years ago um, by my guesstimations it's worth somewhere between 700,000 to 1.2 million and it's on this property it is, it is within 75 feet of where you and I are standing right now. Well, the only, see, the reason we're concerned is 
you know, when somebody's taking pictures, you never know if they're casing the for a bank robbery uh, or I mean, something like that. I, that's, that's I suppose I, that is true. I suppose that well, is it's true. It's definitely true because we've had. You guys have. Have you guys have been robbed here before? Not in this location. Oh my goodness! But uh, we've that had. Woo! That would be scary. I can't imagine. Like, I mean, I suppose it's. I would think even if somebody's came in with like a note and slipped it over, you didn't see any weapons it would still be very unnerving. I'm safe to assume that you would probably send the person home that dealt with that That's that why day. we've had people try to case, case the bank and well... You, you haven't actually why, had any robberies here though, right? We, you can see why we wonder about... Well, I, I guess in a way you could say that I am casing the bank, but not so much the bank. I'm casing all the property around the bank in this entire vicinity and I'm going to go home with my photographs and my video and I am going to find the exact spot where that gold is buried. And when I do, I gotta tell you, Tom, if you're up there and you listen, I am going to find it. Thank you, brother. So we, we both, we are obsessed with treasure digging. He's dead now, so he's not gonna see that, but. Um, so, what, yeah, are you just saying, making up about this list? Who, it sounds like it's just you and your brother, so there shouldn't be any list. There. That, I, I have, a producer that I am recording this for because we may turn it into a little thing for Netflix, the whole story. Um, we made home videos when I was a kid, so we've got a lot of home videos, and the producer was very clear, don't talk with anybody about it. And if you do, I told you way too much as it is, but what I told you is so freaking vague, you could come out here to the backhoe and you wouldn't find that money. Oh, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you would think so, but let's let's be real. Was it Tom again? Is it Tom? So let's be realistic. Let's say, let's, let's just say for argument's sake that, that the treasure was buried like right there, right in that spot right there, just right on the, right on the corner of that. If it was buried there, now that is people's bank property. There's, there's no doubt about it. Now, let me ask you, realistically, if I came out here with a shovel at three o'clock in the morning, dug two and a half feet down right there, pulled out a little box and put the dirt back. Number one, who would know? Number two, if they did charge me with any crime whatsoever. What do you think that crime would cost me? I'm not a policeman, I don't know. I could tell you, it's 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 vandalism. It's, it's typically, it's a class C misdemeanor. I'm looking at about a $550 fine. So I am absolutely, I'll be, I'll be frank with you, Tom. When I do the math, and there's a lot of math involved, when I do the math, if I find out it's in the middle of your parking lot, I am absolutely certain that gold will get dug up. For $1.2 million, 700,000 to 1.2. I'm not terribly concerned about a fine from the bank or anything like that, but I assure you, just, just to let you know, I have no desire and no intention to break any laws or to, or to damage anybody's property or to trespass on anybody's property. So just, I wanna make that clear and be on the record as saying, I have no intention whatsoever of breaking any laws, but I am definitely gonna find the gold. And I'm not saying it's right here or in here. Yeah. I'm just saying, I know, I mean, it's, it was it was well, 47 years ago. <laughs> and all that's well and good, but the bottom line is if you wanna do anything on here, it's probably a good idea to talk to somebody. Oh, sure, so they can take the money, uh, they can take the gold and say, well, it's our property. Yeah, no, I agree, I, I, I agree. It would be a very good idea for the bank if I were to discover that the gold is buried on this property, I agree. It wouldn't be good for me, but it would be good for the bank. I agree. It has nothing to do with that. It all has to do with security for the bank. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Again, yeah, yeah, no, I think we're all on the same page. Just, but I didn't wanna, you know, I'm not gonna, and here's the fun thing. I'm, I'm uh, somewhat of a engineer myself and I develop apps and all that. So I've got a secondary thing. Cause I, I, I basically figured if, and I don't think he did. But if Tom came out here and dug this thing up sometime after the 4th of July, 1976, and when he died in 2013, uh, I'm 99.9% .9 sure he didn't do that. But if he did, it's okay because I've got a secondary thing. I'm, I'm making an app that essentially what it'll allow me to do is aim a camera at any brick building and count how many bricks are in the building itself. I just have to, the problem is I have to go around the entire building. I'm not sure if I can access the far side of this one. I might be able to. But anyway, so it's a little side gig I do on the side just to test this thing out and see if I can count the bricks in the building. And I'll contact the contractors that made this building and they typically know within 
you know, within a few pallets, how many bricks they use to build the building. So that's kind of cool. It's, it's a little side gig and it's, believe it or not, apps like that are very, very valuable. And if I can perfect that app, uh, I could I can make an awful lot of money. Awful lot of money. So yeah, I don't know to tell you guys. I mean, unfortunately, I, People's bank really can't do anything about me being out here on the sidewalk taking pictures. I could be out here taking pictures and video all day long. Obviously, if I went to the property and you said, hey, no, nah, we don't want you on our property, I would have to leave and all that. As of right now, I don't have a, any sort of a trespass order from any People's Bank anywhere, and I don't anticipate I'll get one from today or any other day going forward. Because like I said, I have no intention or desire to break any laws. I'm certainly not gonna damage your property or, or right. trespass or anything like that. So I just, you know, just rest assured all is well. I am not casing the joint for robbing the bank. I am casing the entire surrounding area so that I could find that damn blasted treasure. And I will find it. It's crazy, it's wild, but yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see, I can almost guarantee you, when we post the whole story, the whole drama and all that and, and, and everything, it'll be seen by tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. It's a wild, wild story that you almost have to see it to believe it. And, and that's another little side thing I'm doing. I got a side, side thing where I document wild situations for example i'm not gonna tell you which one but there is a city hall in the state of ohio that <sighs> story has it the tile in their in their foyer is made out of crushed up human bones and if you google it it, it sounds crazy wild if you go to youtube and you type in like um i'm not gonna tell you which city it is but if you type in ohio Soylent green tile. I swear to God, you will find the story, and it's it's the craziest thing ever. It's human bones in their tile, and and the creator, being the sicko that he was, called that particular line of tile soylent green. I think we're all familiar with the movie. You ever the movie with Charlton Heston? Soylent green. Oh my God, Tom! You haven't seen Soylent Green, the movie? Oh my gosh! Long story short. It takes place in the future, I think the year 2024. Could be wrong, don't quote me on that. And the world is so overcrowded that they've run out of food, they have no food. So the government is killing people in mass and literally turning them into food. And there's a little, little biscuit thing, it's called Soylent Green. And at the end of the movie, you find out Charlton Heston, oh, wait, wait, I gotta, one second, oh crap. This is spoiler alert, if you've never seen Soylent Green, stop right here. They, at the very end of the movie, Charlton Heston finds out that the food they've been eating is made out of people. And the ending scene is, so, is Charlton Heston getting cut it off and he's yelling out, Silent Green is people! We've got to stop them somehow! That's the end of the movie. And you're like, oh my God! So it's fantastic. It's a classic. How have you never seen Silent Green? Well, anyways. That's a sharp looking outfit you got there, Tom. Your your jacket and all that. Very nice. Well, yeah, I, I hope I hope I've alleviated some of your concerns. I realize that it's absolutely bizarre. And um, I'm not I and I want to make sure that you know I did not do that. I did not touch that at all. But I just noticed that spot there. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, I didn't touch that, so anywho, you're all good, Tom. You're all good. Thanks to 911. What is the address of your emergency? It's People's Bank, 505 East Main Street, and it's a non emergency. Okay, what seems to be the issue? So there's some guy out here randomly taking pictures. He's like been around our entire building. Mm -hmm. um, and I sent one of our people out to like see what the heck, because that's like a safety violation for us, and he seems to be just a nutball. I don't know if we can get him out of here, but that would be good. Okay. Is, and he is on your actual property, though? He's like out in the parking lot? Yeah, he is. So okay, he's so got, he yeah. Move. Are you the one on Main or are you on Fair? We're on Main. He's got a blue jacket on. Well, he's obviously, he's got a camera on a pole and a red hat. So he's taking pictures. 
Yeah, he's been for like the last half hour. Okay. And you're calling from seven four zero seven one? Yeah. No, I don't need to. We just don't like need to put them off the floor. Like we literally don't want people taking pictures of the entire building mm -hmm. <laughs> and the windows, like not from the street, but like he, you know what I mean? Yeah, if they want to call back, that'd be awesome. But he might be like dissipating now. Okay, that's fine. Just point out, log it. Um, and we can disconnect. If he does leave, you just want to give us a call back on our non-emergency line. Um, if you have a pen and paper ready, I can give you a non-emergency line. You can tell us just to disregard then. Yeah. Okay, what is it? It's uh -huh. four zero six eight seven six six eight zero, and it's going to be extension two for dispatch. Just call in. State that you're with People's Bank. Save the individual. I'm sorry. What six eight seven? What is it? Six six eight zero. Extension two for dispatch. This is the uh, the first Bremen Bank. It was uh, established in, uh, I can't read the number, it says 1890 something, I think 1892 or 1897. They are right next door to the People's Bank over here that we are just at. Hey, no complaints on yourself? Oh. All right. You're good. I'm Officer Squires, Lancaster Police Department. I'm sorry, Officer. Squires, Lancaster Police Department. Squires, like Billy Squires? Well, Squires with an S. I get it all the time. There you go. All Sweet. the time. I could, I could think of far worse names than Billy Squire. You know, yeah. So what's, what's shaking? The only reason I'm making contact with you, um, apparently People's Bank called and said that you were taking photos or reporting or something did, did like that. Can you tell you what the whole story is? No. It's wild, but I, I, I swore I wouldn't tell anybody else. I already told Tom, so... I, I will summarize it with two things. Number, all I can say is, my my brother Tom and I were into treasure digging and, and burying treasure and things of that nature, and we buried more than one, shall we say, time capsule. Some of those time capsules are ridiculously valuable. <laughs> I kind of got into it with Tom. I didn't give him any specifics. I, there's no way I would. No way. I, I, you could twist my arm. I wouldn't give specifics. But we, we took photographs back in the day, specifically on the 4th of July, 1976. Okay. And, uh, and quite frankly, I don't, I don't think what we did back then was entirely legal, but we were kids. We didn't, you know, you know rambunctious, troublemaking kids. Anyway, so we buried stuff, and the plan was to dig it up on September 23rd, 2027. But my brother Tom is dead. He was in law enforcement. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you know, it, it was his long... He got in an accident and he was in a wheelchair and finally. So uh, it is, it, it was a bummer. But um, but our contract that he and I had kind of became null and void when uh, when he died or if I died. When one of us died, if one of us died before September 23rd, 2027, then all bets are off, you know, each man for himself. Um, and it's just me and Tom, so nobody else knows. I, I told, the other reason I told him, it's because his name is Tom, the, the the bank dude over here. Gotcha. His name's Tom, and I thought, okay, I I'll, I'll call this a, a peace offering to Tom because <laughs> he seems like a nice guy, and I didn't yeah. want to upset him. And I am kind of recording the whole situation, the whole. I'm I'm video recording the documentary because okay. I, I I hope to eventually release a documentary on the whole story of me and Tom. I don't know if you know who Mel Fisher is, a uh, famous uh, Google when you get home. Mel okay. Fisher famous treasure hunter who has probably found more gold than any man alive. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and I met Mel Fisher when I was a kid and it sparked my interest in treasure hunting. And my brother Tom and I got on wild hair uh, more than once and said, let's, instead of burying, or instead of finding treasure, medley detectives and stuff, let's, let's make this bury some treasure. I got you. And there was one treasure in particular. Yeah, we had one, we had a, like, I don't even know what it's called. The old, um, the little, ah, I don't know. It was, you know, a little football thing. How old? You're, you're way too young for that. Forget it. You wouldn't know. You Test wouldn't. me. Try me. Well, it was like a little <laughs> game thing. It wasn't a Game Boy. Way before Game Boy. We're talking like the 1970s, okay? It's not like the single, single handheld yeah, it's game. It's a single handheld thing. Like it's a little football thing. And, like football thing. and all it was was like lines. It was just lines. And you're going to go, and you had to go across the field. But because the skin is so small, 
like one time the bus field was like 10 yards. And yeah. so, so yeah, you all go back and forth when you cross the far side, you come back over. Anyways, we put one of those in one of the things and it was, uh, it's not worth anything. But we had a coin collection. And okay. we had our grandfather died and passed down to us. He died when I was like four. He passed down to me and my brother Tom a ridiculously valuable gold coin collection. Gold coin, coin collection. And my dumbass brother and I, nine years old, well, no, I guess I was eight. Eight years old and ten and a half, the two of us decided, let's, we like treasure digging so much, let's go bury Grandpa's coin collection. I mean, here's the thing, you're on, the pub, you're on a public sidewalk, Bill, yes. which you're allowed to do. Well, so. funny thing is, I, I, told, I told Tom, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah. I told Tom, I really can't get into it. And I said, you know what the hell? It was Tom, I'll tell you, seven hundred thousand uh, dollars on a good day, and more than likely, one point one, one point two million dollars. So I told Tom as we were talking. I said, you know, if it's, I said, I'll be frank with you, Tom. If it's right here on your property on the lawn, what's the worst that would happen? If I come out here at three in the morning with a pickaxe, dig two feet down, dig up a little box that is inside of another box, and scrape, and even cover the whole. Box. Give me a worst case scenario. It's vandalism on private property. Class C misdemeanor, probably a five hundred and fifty dollar fine, maybe a thousand dollar fine. Let's go on the worst case scenario. It's a thousand dollar fine and thirty days in jail, which is never going to happen. But if it did, I'd be thirty days in jail with a smile on my face, my friend. So, but I assured him. I said, just you know, I want to go on record as saying, I am not going to trespass on your property. I'm ten four. <laughs> I'm not going to trespass on your property. And, and I said, I'm not going to uh, vandalize your property, nothing like that. I said, I have no intention of breaking any laws. So I'm very clear, Tom. So don't worry, rest assured, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the bad guy. I'm not casing the place like that. So <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I know. Well, like I said, you're on a public sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. You're not on property. You're well, on private. It's nice to meet you, sir. Thank yeah, you for yeah, taking yeah. time to talk to me. Pleasure, right. pleasure. It's Squires again, right? Squires. If, tell me your first name is Billy. It is not. Damn it! It is not. Oh, that would have been sweet. I know. I, well, hey, right. you enjoy your Squires, sir, you okay? have a good one. You too, sir. <laughs> no, you're okay. I see. Did you just see him pass, like, passing? Or yeah, so uh, originally people was bank is who called in. Um, and they said they had a poll and he was filming. Um, when I drove by, because initially it's where I was heading, I saw him standing outside of your business. Okay. He's on the sidewalk, so I mean, there's, right. he's legally allowed to take right. photos, videotape from the sidewalk. Right. Um, he just advised he's doing a documentary for so his brother or something like that. So, we were warned about him several months ago. Okay. Um, it was sent, I don't know, Mark, you know, somebody sent it down. He's got a YouTube video. We watched some of his stuff. We were aware of it. I seen him, and I told my manager, Mm -hmm. And then I seen you showed up, so we were kind of wondering what was going on. So I don't know how much of the windows and from what you okay. know. Did they say when you got the memo regarding him, like, was there anything entailed behind it? Like, if he just. He's just antagonizing people. Antagonizing people. Antagonizing people. Okay. Um, there was something on the video about yeah. him so, trying to film inside windows to like prove that people's information from banks could be leaked and they could just look in and see everything and okay. all that stuff. That's why I showed up the windows. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay. I know my manager wanted to talk to the yep. on the phone with our regional manager. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think so people's called you. Yeah, originally. <laughs> I was just talking to the girl over there, okay. and I was like, "Hey, heads up." Yeah. So what did he tell you? So he uh, he basically crazy. said that he is filming a documentary for uh, apparently him and his brother. They used to live here in town. They buried like a time capsule, or there might be like gold coins that are buried somewhere. And he knows exactly where they are buried. Um, and that's why he's out here filming a documentary. Um, so, um, several months ago, he came into, so this would have been August 15th of 2023. We need you to verify that wire. I can't. It's over my limit. Oh, it is? It's 250000 Oh, I didn't know what it was. 
So um, he came to our circle of office. What he's trying to do is he's trying to look in our windows and see if he can see personal information that he's trying to get us in trouble. Gotcha. Okay. So it's cult news if you ever want to look him up. Hey, gotta stop here. It is not cult news. It will always be K-U-L-T news. Please don't call us cult news. We're not a cult. It's cult news, if you ever want to look him up. It's okay. K-U-L-T. But I'm sure. I'm sure I'll probably he goes, <laughs> he goes and does, like, random stuff at banks, at anywhere to try to get somebody in trouble is what okay. he does. I gotcha. And I just think his mind is, he, he's obviously nuts if you're going around taking that much personal time. Um, but he was trying to say that, that our circle of our office, that we were exposing private information because of our windows you could see through and see, but you can't. Like, okay. there's nothing. So that's why we knew who he was when he showed up, so she put that on the lines. Because okay. he wants to try to get people in trouble. I gotcha. So that's what I was telling people, because okay. they didn't know who he was. Yeah, because, I mean, like I was telling her, he's on the sidewalk. Yeah. There's nothing I can do. He can... Which is fine. I just like don't that. want him, like we said, we already know the drill. If he comes in here, we obviously yeah. aren't going to be us. nice, yeah. but not yeah. get out yeah. any information. Yeah. We're hurry, like, we hope he comes in so we can say thanks. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's nuts. So, he, so you got a memo a couple months ago regarding... In August. Yes, because he was at our Circleville location. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So FYI, if you see him, if other banks or institutions report him, okay. he's trying to get people in trouble. Okay. So yeah, there's a YouTube video out there somewhere of our circle of office where he's like, I walked up to this branch and you could see through their windows just what what private information you know people walking by can see. Mm -hmm. So he's just trying to get people in trouble. Okay. I got so you. FYI, then we're, we're, we're like, because they asked me if I called you guys and I said no, because sometimes you know. People taking pictures, it could be the county, you know, the county yeah. taking pictures because it's, you know, that yeah. time. So that's what I told her. I said, oh, he's probably, it's probably just the county. And then she goes, no, it's not him. He's the one that has the microphone. So I was like, oh, so as soon as I saw him, I knew okay. exactly. All right. So FYI. Like I said, he's on the sidewalk. That's fine. He's harmless. I, well, so far. <laughs> he causes any issues, he comes in. If you guys want him anything right. like that, just give right. us a call. Okay. All right. Alrighty. Thank you so You're much. You're very welcome. Not a problem. <laughs> well, that was fun. So, uh, <coughs> lest anybody decide they're gonna come out here and dig up that treasure, here's the fun part. Part of that story about me and Tom burying things and hiding treasures is very much true. What's not true is it wasn't in Lancaster, Ohio. It was in Visalia, California. And the church wasn't our marker. Our marker was the rooftop of the Tulare County Courthouse, where Tom and I played. That was our playground, the Tulare County Courthouse, right across the street from where we used to live. So if you want to have some fun, follow along, because Stacy and I just bought a mobile home. We bought an RV and we're traveling across the country. And we're heading to Visalia, California. And I'm going to dig up that treasure. Join us. It'll be a good time. Mike Morton, KULP News, Lancaster, Ohio. Hey, in a recent video, I mentioned that uh, in, a, in, a, in the next video, I would uh, tell you guys a guaranteed cure for hiccups. Uh, it's very simple. It is not a spoonful of sugar or any nonsense like that. Basically, what you do, so you got a cup, right? You put about that much water in it. You got a cup. And instead of drinking the water like normal, like, like, like that, instead of drinking it like that, you put your mouth on the far side and you lean over. You lean over and you should be almost completely leaned over, doubled over as you're drinking the water. And you're really just kind of sipping on it, right? You're sipping on the water. It's a constant, constant sip. And that much water should take you, like, take a good 60 seconds to drink that. When you finish drinking it, Stay leaned over for about another 20 seconds and then slowly stand back up normally 
and your hiccups will be gone. So if you got hiccups, you're welcome. We're gonna start our RV adventures March 1st. We're heading to North Carolina first, and then we're traveling west to Visalia, California. Oh my goodness, why would you, <laughs> my goodness, why would you call the police? Because you're not answering my questions and you're not doing what I asked you to do. The this to free you. press can't I be against the code of conduct. And I'm going to ask you to leave me alone. No. Free press is not against the law. Jane? Call the, ridiculous. Can I take pictures on the sidewalk? You're not permitted to take my picture without my permission. You are breaking the law. You, know, you think it's against the law for me to take a picture. Bless your heart. You're not too bright, are you? Jelly bean? Oh, no, thank you. They've been in my pocket. They're real warm and soft. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.